So you want to know how to export stems or multi-tracks or you want to know what stems or multi-tracks are? Let's talk about it. Very quickly, before I show you how to do the exporting, multi-tracks are individual tracks. Stems usually mean buses. These terms are used very loosely. So one, some people say one meaning the other. However, if you're dealing with a professional requesting them from you, most likely when they say stems, they mean buses. When they say multi-tracks, they mean all the individual tracks. So let's get into it. Please like and subscribe. Now I loaded up an instrumental track I'm working on for an album. As you can see, we aren't actually routed to any of these buses. Now for this example, we might as well bust these out real quick. So now we've got these hooked up. We've got our drum bus instruments and our vocal bus. Now that I have these, I can export all of these mixer tracks as their own separate mixer tracks. And we can do this with our export option. Now, once we get to our location for save as, you'll generally want a folder for your multi-tracks and stems. So you can right click and go new folder, or you can just control shift N and type the name you want. If you want to be a little quicker about it, and we'll call this track outs. And we can either do wet or dry, wet, dry. And so we'll go to the wet one. We click save and now we have the split mixer tracks button. We want to click that. So that's what's going to split these into individual tracks. Now we want to keep this decently high quality because most likely we're sending this out to get mixed or to collab with somebody. So we'll generally want to go 32 bit float. This is going to add on processing time. And then we want to set our quality to a point where we keep size and processing time down, but we don't mess with our project. Now this resampling quality, everybody generally thinks it's just the quality, but really you're fine setting this lower as long as you don't hear what's called aliasing, which is artifacts that you're generally only gonna hear or get if you pitch things too far. This is for actually when you resample audio and pitch or stretch audio, our resampling quality here is going to decide how well do we want to resample that, well, audio. Generally, this is set at 24 point sync as default with FL Studio. 32 point sync is pretty good, honestly. And 64 point sync is honestly kind of overdoing it, but at least then you know you will not be getting any artifacts unless you're doing some pretty ridiculous extreme pitching and resampling of audio. In the FL Studio user manual, they actually say to only change this if you're hearing things that you don't want to hear. And if you ever do hear it and you like it, then you can keep it. Now, there is actually a live resampling amount in FL Studio. In your audio settings right here, 32 point C, this is the same thing. So if this differs from your output, you're going to have different sounding output versus what you're actually working on, potentially, if you are getting artifacts from that actual resampling of audio. So we'll want to go here and we'll want to split mixer tracks. Now, the next thing we have is enable insert effects. And this is really cool because we can export everything dry as well. And then whoever we're sending it to can pick from the wet stuff and the dry stuff. And this is exceptionally useful if you're doing things like adding reverb on your actual effects track, because that cannot be taken off. If it's an auxiliary reverb track, they can just mute the track. Kind of like I have a vocode riser auxiliary over here that's adding dynamics to my vocoder. If they want to take that off, they can just mute that track. If that was a reverb, they could just mute that track. But my actual vocode vocals here, if I put it on this right here, they would not be able to change it. It would be in there so we could in turn turn off our mixer effects our insert effects and send them a dry copy before i actually export this something to note if you have crazy routing like a hi-hat for example right here instead of going to the drum bus your hi-hat's going to you know three different one of these and all of these are routing to this track and you have like hi-hat high distortion, you know, hat widening, hat panning, 
and you're doing all this parallel work, and then you have like hi hat out. Something to note is all this stuff you're doing here, when you export, you are going to get an individual track for each and every one of these. And so now if I export, okay, so I exported my tracks. We go in here, open this out, and we can see everything that we have. Now, how is telling you about those hi-hats? If we check that out, we have hat panning, hat widening, hi-hat distortion, hi-hat out, and our original hi-hat, which is up here, which would be the input. We need to make a decision here because we don't want to send this to somebody and have them digging through this stuff and trying to figure out what the heck we want. We need to make it easy for the people we're working with so they want to work with us and be professional. So you need to make the decision. Do you want to give them all these parallels and let them balance the volumes between them? If so, then we want to delete our input here and we want to delete our hi-hat out and leave them with just the audio that makes our hi-hat out. If we brought them all together to the hi-hat output and put effects on the hi-hat output that we like, and we're like, that's our final hi-hat, we like that, then we need to get rid of these three here. Now, because I just added the dry signal to itself three times, this hi-hat output is probably clipping and disgusting. And so I'll get rid of all of this and just leave the original hi-hat. Now, any effects tracks that are in use will be rendered. Insert 28, for example, just has a high low cut on it. It's a parametric EQ, but there is no audio actually running to insert 28. So this right here is an entire clip of silence. We don't need that. Also, when we export like this, we'll have a master exported as well as something that says current, which is basically prior to any master effects at the master. So if we're just printing out stems and multi-tracks and we don't need to send any kind of reference track, we can delete these, right? So we've got a little bit of manual work. My phone reference track here, which if you want to see a cool video about how to reference on your phone without exporting your audio, click above, as well as our actual reference track. I do not need, I can delete. Now, do they want stems or do they want multi-tracks? If they want multi-tracks, then we don't need the box, which is our vocal bus. We don't need instruments, our instrument bus, or drums. And we can either choose to delete these, or we could even move them to another folder and call that our stems folder. And then we can send that over with the rest of this in case it could be of any use to them. Now, when you do this, you'll probably want to put the word bus after this. I should have named this drum bus, instrument bus, vocal bus. That way they could really get a sense of this. But hey, you know, this is just for example. Now, because of this manual work you have to do and this little bit of touching, I always suggest that you take all of these and open them into a new empty project and make sure that all your instruments are there and that there's nothing in there that you need to delete or get rid of. So after we do that, we could export dry by clicking enable insert effects off. And after we've exported, and we've gone through and organized all of our tracks, we can then put this into a zip file and send it off to wherever we need to send it off. Or something that's exceptionally useful is we can save it and back it up for later. The reason this is useful, because in the event that you end up on a different laptop or for some reason a plugin isn't compatible anymore, it's a lot of years down the line, you want to open this up, whatever have you, if your plugins are not the same, then at least you have an exported audio file rather than a missing plugin or a plugin that doesn't work. To zip something like this, you just go back, you got track outs, you can right click it. This is the folder I made with the wet and dry effects in it. And we can go send to compressed zipped folder. So I hope that was helpful. We talked about the difference between stems and multi-tracks. We talked about how to export them. We talked about the little bit of maintenance that's required after exportation and how to send the files to a zip folder to get them ready to be sent off. If you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.